ready to kick off our pay-per-view main card. The Tale of the Tape is brought to you by VChain, the official Layer 1 blockchain of UFC. Pedro Munoz, 35. Sean O'Malley is 27. Five inches is the difference in height, but it will be a seven-inch reach advantage for the three-to-one favorite, Sugar Sean O'Malley. All right, now for the introductions. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the team of the arena in Las Vegas for UFC 276, Adesanya versus Cannoneer. Presented by Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. And now, this fight is three rounds in the UFC Bat and Weight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A big martial artist holding professional record. 15 wins, one loss. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, Sugar Shaw. Corner, a big martial artist holding professional record. 19 wins, seven losses, one no contest. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 135 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, presenting the number nine ranked bantamweight contender in the world, Pedro, the young Punisher. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Outstanding referee Jason Herzog draws the pay-per-view opener, the beautiful Ariane Celeste with us tonight for UFC 276. And as you know, we never take your viewership for granted. Grateful to have you with us tonight for this massive pay-per-view event. Tonight's Fight Clock is brought to you by Timex, official timekeeper of UFC. Get early access to a limited drop of Timex UFC watches while supplies last at Timex.com. O'Malley, Southpaw in green. Munoz will switch stances as well. He's in black. And he's doing it with O'Malley because he understands that he wants to try to land those outside kicks. There was a lot of intensity between these two at the weigh-in yesterday at the press conference in each other's face. And there is nothing like a UFC pay-per-view. It is the best. I'm telling you. It's just the best. Munoz seemed to be pretty emotional this week. Not that he can't channel that in the right way, but you know he wants this one in the worst way. Well, when you have fought the level of guys that he has fought, that comes with wins and losses. So getting this one would feel great to Pedro Munoz, but it will not be easy. Couple early calf kicks for Munoz. It's very obvious that's a big part of his strategy. Yep. The one guy to defeat Sean O'Malley inside the octagon was Marlon Vera, and he relied very heavily on those calf kicks, and he really put damage on Sean's leg and compromised his mobility. Sean has checked a few of those, though. He's done a good job of just turning the knee out on the calf kick. Yep, there right it is. There. Yeah. It's because they're blind. Munoz has thrown them blind. He's got to throw something up top if he wants to land that calf kick. Well, who should win Crypto.com's fan bonus of the night? Scan the QR code or go to Crypto.com slash fan bonus. Help your three favorite athletes win up to 30K in Bitcoin. Voting is open right now. O'Malley faints. O'Malley trying to draw out a reaction. Faint to try to make Munoz attack. He's a great counter striker. It is well documented. Pedro Munoz hasn't been finished in MMA. On the other side, Sean O'Malley's last five wins have come by knockout or TKO. You saw in that last calf kick attempt, Munoz actually pulled it back because a few have been checked, but that one wasn't. Maybe Munoz starts to take that kick a little higher because O'Malley's doing a really good job of checking. 
Yeah, he's obviously prepared very well for this. Yep. Knowing that that's a, a big part of Pedro's game. Right hand over the top, got Munoz's attention. And we talked about this with Jalen Turner earlier. These guys are so long for the weight class that when you feel you're out of range, right, right here, here please, can't land. right here. I know it was an accident. O'Malley nearly landed I, right I, I where he I, intended to, a little yeah. bit low, but if you watch his he vision, right, he's blocked the kick down into high. it, okay? So it's a complete accident. Give a little time. Yeah, it caught the kind of caught the right on the belt yeah. line. Interesting. Like, I think the audience is booing because they don't think it's a cup kick. Right. It really wasn't that Good. low. No, it wasn't very low, but maybe it's the heel that caught the cup. through the guard for O'Malley, inside leg kick for Munoz. A lot of kicks by Pedro. A lot of kicks without setups. Yep. To this point, leg kicks the only strike that Pedro Munoz has landed under 90 seconds here in round one. Good leg kick there by Munoz. Yeah, every time Sean switches stances, Pedro mirrors him. He wants to keep that back leg yeah. available. Munoz yeah, goes high, high yeah. Feints from Sean O'Malley, as you'd expect. Munoz attacks low again. And the one thing about Pedro Munoz is you've got to be careful in your approach against him because he hits so hard. We saw him put down Dominic Cruz two times, I believe. Guy has tremendous power, and like you said, very durable. So you got to be careful in your approach, and I think the way O'Malley is approaching that is a credit to that. Munoz not biting on these feints, but he's definitely at a speed disadvantage tonight. Sort of telegraph that spinning offering. Nice body kick by O'Malley to close the round. Tonight's corner cam is brought to you by Body Armor, the official sports drink of the UFC. Grab one today at Casey's. Just relax, just relax. We have plenty of time. Plenty of time. Just cool down your breathing. You're in phenomenal shape. Phenomenal shape. Yeah, you can get it below your belly button. You're good. Hey, you can step low a little bit with that right hand and, and whip it. He's standing there right in front of you when he's kicking. Just snipe him. Just fucking ding him right on the chin, okay? For him to get lost, what do you need to do? After you after you kick him, you need to do something else. You need another move. You can't just stay at a kick, okay? Okay, let's go. Crypto.com is giving you the power to vote for your top three fighters from the night. Go to crypto.com forward slash fan bonus to cast your vote now. All right, Dean Thomas watching this one intently for us. Of course, you see your former stable mates at American Top Team with Pedro Munoz. Your Second thoughts round, on what buddy you've ready. seen thus far? Buddy ready. Well, both Go. guys are very well prepared for each other. I think the problem with Sean O'Malley is he was expecting Pedro Munoz to come at him more, and Pedro was not falling for that. He, he stand back a little bit farther, and I think that's going to give Sean O'Malley some problems. You heard Sean Corner tell him to just snipe him. Again, he's got the range. He's got the length. If he can get his jab working a little bit, then you'll see him start to let those right hands go. Pedro is doing a very good job of distance, though. He comes close, but then when he senses that Sean is coming towards him, he's backing up. And he's backing up, looking for counters and looking to land those chopping low kicks. Pedro's corner wants another action after his leg kick. When he lands leg kicks, they want him to throw something after the kicks. This is another level for Sean O'Malley. Yeah. 
Good right hand over the top. Oh, oh. just missed with that wheel kick. Man. And I think that's one of the things that people underestimate about Sean O'Malley. He's a tremendous athlete. So he does things that not many guys do in the weight class. He played basketball, baseball, football, soccer. Outstanding athlete. Munoz attacks the body. Pedro very disciplined, though, in terms of his entries and exits tonight. Well, he has to be. The risk is way too great. The, the, the dangers are too high to go in there reckless. Because we have not seen Pedro fight like this. This is new. Munoz has some swelling on that lead left leg, courtesy of the O'Malley low kicks. We've also never seen Pedro fight anyone this tall. Yeah. I mean, at 135, Sean is a very imposing figure. And that advantage is just gigantic. It's so frustrating trying to get close to a guy who's an excellent striker with a huge reach advantage, five-inch height advantage. Yeah. It's the feints that get you. Because when he feints, Pedro has to stop. Inside leg kick is there for Munoz. Under three minutes to go. The next level of the Jordan Poole experience is here. Nope. In theaters, July 22nd. It's also the speed and the fact that Sean doesn't load up. He just fires them in there. There's, there's no wind up. There's no telegraph. That's what Tim Welch in some part was calling for. Those kicks right up the middle. Munoz way out of range with his offering. So Pedro has done a nice job mixing up the leg kicks. Stinging jab from O'Malley. Be careful with the accidents, right? They're adding up. Ooh. Yeah, that's a bad one. You got time. You got time. Do the best you can here. Yeah? Let me give you a little time. Stand by. I'm going to have a doctor just come in and look at you, okay? All right, Jason Herzog Thanks. calling for the hey, octagon Give me a towel of water position. after he's done. We're gonna give him time. I'm gonna give him a towel with some water too to help you. Okay, I'll ahead. give it to you and then you'll apply. Okay, that's Thank fine. you. Go ahead. Give him, give him time. here do the best we can hey Pedro just take a moment here we'll put the towel on your eye try to that calm things his, down it was back to back I think Pedro is he, it looks like he's reaching for a disqualification here. he's complaining of not only does he cannot see that is the back part of the eye is hurt so he, he said that he said that it was back to back that's it anticlimactic doesn't even begin to describe it as they call off the unintentional fight. Unintentional foul. It's an unintentional foul. No decision. Yeah, unintentional foul. All right, so Jason Herzog ruling that it is an unintentional foul, which means it will be a no contest between Sean O'Malley and Pedro Munoz. That's a bummer. Man. Yeah. It's a bummer, but bummer. And it, it's just such an unfortunate thing that happens with MMA gloves and fingers. And you can clearly see what Sean was doing. Was just trying to push his hand out there. He Rage. wasn't extending the fingers. In fact, his, his fingers were raised. Yeah. Just an inadvertent eye poke. All right, we're going to look back at it. This fight replay is brought to you by Sweet Sweat. Check out their website, sportsresearch.com. Right here, you see Pedro jab, double jab, trying to close distance, and 
Sean just had his hands actually you know, pointed straight it, up. It really didn't look that bad. No, it doesn't. But I like, mean, you can never left, tell what happens at, with see, the eye. Oh, there it is. There it, it is. There. Yeah. there it is. It looks worse on that angle. Yeah. And, and Munoz first, did say he felt like he got touched set twice in that eye. For yeah. Worth. Yeah, he was, uh, it looked like he was trying to find his range with his hands up like you are told to do by the officials, but got him in the eye. We could not find evidence of a second eye poke. Well, sometimes guys get punched in the eye and they think it's a right. finger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Sean O'Malley is a hard guy to fight with two good eyes, never mind one. So hopefully the fan base will give Pedro Munoz the benefit of the doubt. But certainly a disappointing conclusion to our pay-per-view main card opener. All right, tonight's official decision is brought to you by Nope. The next level of the Jordan Poole experience is here at Nope in theaters July 22nd. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, at three minutes, nine seconds of round number two, based on the doctor's advice, referee Jason Herzog is called a stop to this contest. This fight is now declared a no decision. Well, Sean O'Malley, Daniel, had barely broken a lather when this fight gets called off, and uh, we move along, but very frustrated.